Hey everybody, this is Dr. Gibbs. Welcome to the Tuesday Live. I have a very special treat with uh, for you today. I'm here with Dr. Monica Minjur. She is a fertility specialist with a direct care practice in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, and she's here today to talk to us all about hormones and fertility. So um, welcome, Dr. Monica. It's great to have you on. Thanks. I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. Thank you for coming. Um, all right. Can you tell us um, a little bit more about yourself? I know you were uh, in a general family medicine practice up until sort of recently, and you have uh, recently changed your career path and decided to do something really special. So why don't you tell us about it and how yeah. you got there? Yeah. So, um, so I'm a board certified family medicine doc by training and I've practiced for 11 years, um, in general family medicine and always as a part of that work, um, I had been kind of specializing in women's health specifically in regards to restoring natural menstrual cycles and helping women with, um, infertility in ways that were more natural. So for example, I don't refer anybody for IVF or IUI. Um, I have never prescribed the birth control pill, um, so the idea is, is to try and find whatever the underlying problem is in a way to help get cycles back to more regular, um, to help with cycle symptoms, but also to help people um, with fertility. So I've done a little bit of that throughout the years that I was practicing family medicine um, and eventually just came to a point in life where I decided I wanted to make that my whole um, life's mission as far as my work goes. Um, and so started this new, uh, radiant clinic where that's all I do every day. And I love it. That's so cool. Um, so before we go on, can you define IVF and IUI for my listeners? Really quick? Yeah. So, so IVF is, um, in vitro fertilization and IUI is intrauterine insemination. So both procedures are a little bit different. Um, IVF typically means that you're going to see a reproductive endocrinologist you generally are on a bunch of hormones and a bunch of medications to have a timed cycle where you have an implanted, um, an embryo already implanted into you versus IUI or intrauterine insemination typically involves <clears throat> where you just have um, sperm taken and inserted into the uterus um, at, at the appropriate time of your ovulation in order to try and um, help a pregnancy to occur. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so do you see a lot of women who have trouble with their cycles as a result of just modern lifestyle choices or contraceptives. Um, you said you don't uh, recommend contraceptives and I, I'm kind of right there with you on that. So um, talk to us a little bit about what you see as far as people who are having trouble with um, fertility and getting their cycles regular. Yeah. So I think one of the tough things is, is that I see a lot of women who come to me because they want to try and get pregnant, but they had been on birth control for many years um, or even or even a short time. And they're told that, oh, once you stop it, your cycles will come back and everything will be fine. Well, there's two problems with that. First of all, for some people, their cycles don't come back just fine. Um, and the mm -hmm. other is, is that a lot of these women were put on birth control at some point in time because they were having irregularities. So for example, oh. um, you know, if a woman is not having regular cycles or she's only having a period every eight to 12 weeks, sometimes that's when she's put on birth control to try and regulate the cycles. Well, now she's come off birth control because she wants to get pregnant, but that underlying problem is still there. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. yeah. So a lot well, of yeah, times makes... it's like rip the bandaid off, <laughs> figure Ooh. out the underlying problem. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Cause I see, I see in my thyroid practice, I see a lot of uh, women who have very irregular cycles until we get their thyroid right. So, yeah, absolutely. yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. So what other things do contraceptives do to people? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking in particular about hormones, but what do you what do contraceptives do? I mean, people are like, Oh, yeah, it makes you um, it makes your body think you're pregnant all the time. So you don't have a cycle. And I'm thinking, I don't think it's exactly like that. Yeah. So tell me what's what's the real scoop? 
Yeah. So there's a couple of different ways that contraceptives are supposed to work. Um, ultimately, um, most of them work towards trying to block ovulation from occurring. So ovulation being the time that an egg is released from the ovary in order to be able to allow fertilization to occur. So most contraceptives work to try and block ovulation from occurring. And so the way they do that is, is by blocking the hormones from naturally cycling. So for example, most of the hormones you get as a consistent dosage from the first day that you stop bleeding up until your next period starts. And that's not the way that our bodies naturally work. So in a way, yes, it kind of tricks your body into thinking, hey, my hormones are stable. Therefore, something is something is off and I just don't ovulate. So that's one of the proposed mechanisms. However, we all know that, you know, sometimes people can still get pregnant when they're on contraceptive. So we know that ovulation does still occur sometimes. So the other big ways that it can change your cycle is, is that it can change the amount of cervical mucus that you have. Um, mm -hmm. It can change all of the other hormones, which then, as you know, very well with your practice feeds back on all of the other hormones, whether that's your adrenal glands, controlling stress hormones, thyroid hormones, all of that. And it all kind of works together to just suppress your natural cycles of what's going on with that hormone shift that should be happening on a regular basis. Got it. So it just, it just really can disturb normal cycles in quite a, a quite a Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And not only normal cycles, it can, it can disturb a lot of things. You know, we, I, I talk to women all the time who got put on birth control be, to solve one problem. And all of a sudden they have all these other problems, you know, whether, mm -hmm. whether that's, I'm, I'm losing my hair, I can't sleep. I'm really moody. I've gained a bunch of weight. Um, you know, they, they do come with side effects too. And, and sometimes right. the intended thing that they're supposed to help actually gets worse when they, when they go on these hormones, cause it's throwing mm -hmm. off all the other systems also. Yes. Yeah. I had some personal experience with that when I was starting into the menopause time and, um, I got put on birth control pills and, oh my gosh, they made me into a mean person. It was, yeah, it was terrible. You for, a loop, for sure. <laughs> and that's when you say, Hey, that's the hormones. That's not me. <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you recommend, um, instead of birth control pills, what do you recommend people do to help yeah. their cycles in so a I, more natural way? So I think the biggest thing is looking to figure out <clears throat> why, why are your cycles irregular to begin with? And, and the most important piece is to get that appropriate diagnosis. So um, in our practice, we utilize what's called root cause analysis. And basically it means okay. we keep on tracking until we find what's the ultimate thing that kind of triggered or caused all of the other issues. And so hmm. for a lot of people, those end up being lifestyle things. You know, unfortunately, many of us don't get enough sleep. We're not eating well. We're not exercising appropriately. Um, you know, for people that are overweight, that can throw off your cycle. So a lot of what we do starts with kind of where are those lifestyle changes we can make on a regular basis. The other piece that we look at is then we have you <clears throat> charting your cycles on a daily basis to say, where are you at in your cycle? And that becomes really important because like I said, for women, our cycles are different every day. Therefore our hormones are different every day. So when yeah. it comes time then for us to evaluate, where are you at in your cycle? What are your hormones doing? What are they supposed to be doing? It's really important that I order lab testing to be done based on when are you ovulating? Therefore, that's when I get my lab testing done. So we can evaluate, are your levels where they're supposed to be? And that helps us really get that diagnosis to determine what are the next steps forward for treatment. Yeah. So you mentioned sleep as a problem with a lifestyle habit that people have, but are there other things like I've heard something about, like if you over-exercise too close to your period, it can raise your cortisol and mess yeah. things up. So talk to me a little bit more about some of these other lifestyle things that people do that they think are healthy, but that may not actually be helping them. Yeah. So exercise is a great example. You know, we typically do recommend people <laughs> still get moderate exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Um, but if it's too intense, what happens is, is that your body can actually say, Hey, 
I'm expending too much effort, too much energy, burning too many calories, whatever the case may be. And it actually can decrease ovulation from happening. And so typically, you know, we, we've heard about, um, or maybe, maybe people haven't heard about, but there was a great study done by the um, United States women's soccer team. And they ended up, they timed their exercises based on their cycles. And so it was really fascinating to see, you know, in order to try and help optimize not only their, their athletic performance, but also their health and looking and saying, okay, around the time that I'm having my period, I should not be doing a lot of intense exercise at that time because it actually can decrease your chances of ovulation as your body is saying, wow. hang on, I got to store up. And so typically we recommend, you know, kind of following, just listen to your body. If you're somebody who is training for really intense exercise, that's great. That's fine. But it may be good to say, okay, around the time that I'm having my period, I'm going to take it easy those days. Those are going to be my rest days or my stretching or yoga or gentle walking days mm. um, to kind of take it easy with that. Because even if you're not trying to get pregnant, if ovulation doesn't occur naturally, then you're more likely to have a cycle that can get thrown off, whether that means your cycles start to come too close together, or they can start to be farther apart. Um, so that would be, so that would be the one thing with exercise. I think the other big thing is, is that, um, dietary wise, there's all sorts of stuff out there as far as eat this, don't eat that, eat this at this time, don't eat that at this time. And I think really what we look for is to say diet in moderation, right? And, and this doesn't mean go on an intense diet plan, um, but every individual has different goals that they need um, when it comes to dealing with their fertility, their cycles. And so I always recommend it's important to be working with somebody who understands that in relationship to your cycle. There's not a one size fits all for diet. So even if you read something online that says, oh, hey, do eat this for fertility, it may be right for you, but it may not be. So it's important to work Got with it. somebody who, who evaluates that who, you know, checks your levels. For example, if you're going to start with vitamins or supplements that you understand what's my baseline before mm -hmm. you just go and start taking a bunch of supplements or vitamins. All right. So that's very, very cool. So, um, how can my audience learn more about this kind of topic? Do you have any resources that you recommend that are, are good for, um, maybe somebody who doesn't have as much of a science background to read yeah. or watch yeah. or anything like that. Absolutely. So um, probably the, the, one of the ways that you can certainly uh, learn more or follow us is, is that I do have a podcast. Um, it's called cycle oh. wisdom. And every week we awesome. take and we break it down and we do just one episode on, you know, on one particular topic. So for example, we'll do an episode talking all about uh, PMS, premenstrual syndrome, or an episode all about infertility. So if there are specific things, um, we try and break that down. I always share a patient story um, of mine and then, and then able to kind of give some of the additional details behind it. So that's one resource. Um, the other is, is there are a lot of different resources out there. And, and most of what I do is based on what we call fertility awareness. Um, so even just different searches for fertility awareness methods um, that are out there, they typically have mm -hmm. a lot of the good science and research that's there, um, okay. but in a way that's easily digestible. Um, so for example, yeah. Fem, Fem Health, F-E-M-M -M Health um, is one um, such website. And it's, that's one of the methods that we actually use for people to actually track their cycles, chart their cycles, and it also gives some medical background on it. Um, so that's another great resource, but um, you can also check out our website, radiantclinic.com. And we have a lot of different information and data as far as what's normal cycles, what's not normal. How do I get in touch with somebody to, to kind of help me with, with charting or tracking my cycles? All right. Well, you anticipated my next question was <laughs> how can people get in touch with you? So um, you are at www.radiantclinic.com, all one word. Yeah. Absolutely. And we are able to, um, so we're located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. At this time, I can take um, in-person appointments, but I can also do telehealth visits for anybody in the state of Iowa at this time. Um, we're hoping to expand that in the future, but for now, that's that's where we're at. So, All right. Well, thank you very much. This has been super educational and fun and exciting. And uh, before we uh, sign off, um, if you're listening to this and you're not a physician, if you'll please keep in mind, Scientific proof is not nearly as black and white as people think. And in order to make treatment decisions for individual people, sometimes we doctors have to consider evidence that's not nearly as absolute as we would like. So this is not meant to be uh, personal medical advice. And you should consult your own physician for any 
medical issues or diagnoses that you may have. Um, that's all for now. I'm Dr. Dana Gibbs. I have a thyroid and hormone practice in the North Texas area where I help people with their thyroid imbalances, especially if they've been told they have um, normal thyroid by another physician. If you have questions you'd like to see addressed on a future live session, you can email to me at drgibbs, D-R-G-I-B-B-S at danagibbsme.com. And you can find me on my website at www.danagibbsmd.com. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day. Thanks for watching.